All right, so we're going to pick up with the actual coming into the room and starting the IV now. So when we're picking out our equipment to bring into the room, we want to be sure that we have the IV start kit, and it'll always tell you what exactly is in here. In this case, it does have our gloves, the tourniquet, and everything. So I'm just going to open this up so that we can get the tourniquet out and kind of do a little bit of setup right here. So we've got our gloves, we've got the tourniquet, and remember we can opt to use the blood pressure cuff if we would rather do that on an older adult. We'll set that right there. We've got our tape. We've got stuff to cleanse with, and if your policy is to use betadine, you've got betadine right here. If it's to use alcohol, you have alcohol. And always bring extra alcohol with you. So we're, we brought some extra alcohol so that we can do the horizontal, vertical, and, and uh, circular one. Then we also have gauze if we need it, and we've got our transparent dressing, and we've got our tape. And again, we're not going to set up the tape just right now. We're just going to wait on that. Then. I've chosen a 22 gauge because I feel like for if just doing fluid maintenance on you, this should work well. But um, it's going to tell you both the gauge and how long it is. So this is a one inch needle catheter. We're going to need, if we're doing a saline lock, we're going to need this little extension tubing here. And it's called small bore extension set. And when you open it out of the package, everything's going to be sterile. So as long as you don't contaminate it, you can connect directly to the end of this lure lock right here. But don't touch the end of this, and once this is off, you're not allowed to touch the end of this cap either, because that's going to connect directly to the IV hub. So what we're going to do is get our saline out of the, the package. And when these salines come prepackaged like this, there is always a little bit of air. I don't know if you can see it, but there's some air in the end there. And so you kind of pull backwards on your plunger and hold it straight up and down to get every bit of air out of there until you see saline coming out the end there. And then you can go ahead and connect this straight onto this. And so it just lure locks to this. So that more and more we're going to all these needleless systems where we're not having to use needles to do this stuff with. And we gotta remember that when this comes out of the package, this is air in here right now and you don't ever want to send an air um air into your patient. That's very dangerous and can even result in death. So you've got to always be sure everything is primed that you're working with. So you're just going to watch the fluid come through until you see it drip out the end there and then you know all of the air is out of it. So what I'm going to do is loosen this cap because when I'm um, going to reach for it later and I'll be kind of working one-handed that um, we will have it ready to go. Now, that brings up another point, though, that if you um, are, want another person in the room helping you, don't be afraid to ask another room, whether it be another nurse or a CNA or whoever you want to be there to kind of help support you while you do this, especially if it's been a while since you've started an IV. That's perfectly fine. And we'll back up and just talk about don't forget you want to identify your resident, you know, if they can state their name and date of birth for you, that's ideal to have two identifiers. Um, but at a minimum, you would want to be comparing the picture of the resident to the picture that's in the, the chart. Make sure that you've got orders from the physician and that you've got the verification of the right resident that you're starting the IV on. And that you've talked to them about it, explained it to them, explained what, why the physician has ordered it and what you need to do and so on and so forth. And so this would be the time after I identify you that I'd be asking, are you right-handed or left-handed? And making choices about which arm I'm going to look at first. But again, this is the part that you don't want to rush through. It's well worth the time of really putting the tourniquet in different places and making sure that you've got the vein that you want to, to select. So I've done a little looking already and already decided we're going to do this arm. And I'm going to put the tourniquet on while I don't have gloves on my hands so that I can feel her veins. And so we're looking and we're trying to start out here as distal as possible. And so she's got three veins in here. She's got a little bruise right here, so I would want to avoid a bruised area. And again, what we're feeling for is um, how resilient, how straight, 
that there's no bifurcations and no, no valves that I can feel. And so this is, this is going to be where I'm going to, to aim for. So the tourniquet might need to go a little bit further up um, when I go to, re, to, to reapply it here in a minute. But, um, and, and we may need to, again, remember warm compresses if the veins aren't showing up very good. We can lower the hand and, um, you know, we can have her make fists and do whatever you need to do to give the best possible scenario of you getting it on the first stick. And so we're going to finish setting up our supplies here with the tourniquet off. So we've got that flushed. And now we're going to just take the, um, the IV catheter out of its packaging. And if you haven't worked with these IV catheters um, for a while, what may be new to you is that they have um, their safety needles. And so there is, when you take the cap off, you're just going to pull away to expose the, the needle and the catheter. But this white button right here is the button that will retract the needle. So you don't want to push that until you're ready to retract the needle. And it's made so that you can hold it. It's kind of curved on the side, as you can see, so that you can kind of hold it by the side. So when you're ready to, um, after you've inspected it, when you recap it, just lay it down on the table so that you don't risk um, puncturing yourself and you're just going to recap it and put it to the side until you're ready to use it again. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my gloves on and start cleaning the skin. So get our gloves on. And again, depending on what your institution policy is, you're going to use whatever cleansing product that you're told to use. In this case, we're going to use alcohol. And so what we're going to do is start with cleaning horizontally. So remember, we want that two-inch square. And then we're going to get another one and do the vertical cleaning. And then one more to do the circle. And the rationale for this is so that you're catching those skin cells on every different angle to get the best cleaning possible. And remember, we're not going to come back to the middle of the circle once we've, um, we're going to go from inner to outer. All right, so we've got the skin cleaned and we're letting it dry. And now we're going to go ahead and reapply the tourniquet now. And just rest your arm down a little bit. All right, so now what we're going to do is remember that we can't touch the side again. If we need to view the vein again or touch it again, let me illustrate this. So say you need to feel it one more time right here. What we're going to do is then go back and clean it again. And wiping from distal to proximal does help it to stand up a little bit better right before you go in. So we're going to do that. And then what we're going to do is use, since I'm right-handed, I'm going to use my left thumb to pull backwards on the vein right here. So that's going to help anchor it and from moving away. So we're going to take the needle off. And we're going to make sure our bevel is going up. And at a 10 to 30 degree angle, depending on how superficial the vein is, we're going to enter into the vein. And we're going to remember to tell the resident, okay, you're going to feel a stick now. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. All right. And you can do on the count of three, however you want to do it. But do let them know whenever you're going to go in. All right. So I'm going to enter in. And I've got the, the flashback, so I'm going to go just a little bit more. And then once I'm in, I'm going to be more flush with the skin as I thread the catheter off into the vein. And you want to try to advance it all the way to the hub. And your skin's a little bit tough, so if... You know, I'm not going to force it. I'm going to go ahead and release the tourniquet at this point. And I'm going to go ahead and put pressure 
right here over the vein so that when I take the needle out, it's not going to let blood ooze out. So I'm going to retract this back, and I'm going to go ahead and push the safety button now so that there's no danger of me getting a needle stick. And I'm going to reach for my extension tubing, and I'm just going to kind of keep, you know, keep my pressure here until I can lure lock this onto the hub. Okay, and then once that's in, I, it's okay to let the pressure off of the vein because it's not going to leak anymore. So we've, we're going to flush with two or three milliliters of saline at a minimum. And then we can go ahead and we want the resident to just still be still for us. And we're going to go ahead and put the transparent dressing down. So hold this steady, and you're going to take your... tegaderm or your transparent dressing and we're going to apply it right over the top where this is in the middle. So you want it to go right up to where this lure locks to the extension tubing and press it down firmly and then you're going to just press as you go and remove this outer frame part of it. Okay, so at this point you can undo your saline because you're done with your, your flushing right now. And then we have additional tape that we're going to use to go ahead and tape this down. We're going to put one piece of tape right over this lure lock to stabilize it a little bit further. And of course, um, there are many different methods that you can use to tape down. Some uh, nurses were taught to do the chevron tape underneath before they put the transparent dressing down. So this is, again, another one of those times to know what your institutional policy is. But this is always a safe uh, way to do it if you, if you uh, like this method. So what we're going to do is put one little piece of tape here to anchor that hub a little bit better. Then we're going to do another piece. And usually these extension tubings will make kind of a natural curve. and just, you know, think about how the resident will need to move their arm and whatnot and just decide how you want to secure this. What you don't want to do is let the tape cover the course of the vein where you're in because you're going to need to continue to monitor this for phlebitis, for infiltration. You know, um, this is what you're going to need to continue to monitor and document on. So I'm going to do one more piece of tape. Um, kind of in the middle. Now, um, you can clamp this in between uses. So if you ever go to flush and it's not flushing, the very first thing I find helpful to do is check and just verify that it's not clamped because the IV may still be very good. It's just that if this is clamped off, you're not going to be able to flush it. And again, know what your policy is, you know, so it's, it's not a bad idea to have this clamped when it's not in use. So what we're going to do is we've got the label that goes to this, and so on the table here, we're just going to write the date, the time, and most places are using military time these days your initials, and you do want to put the, the gauge. In this case, it was a 20 gauge that we used. And you can even put one inch for the length of the catheter. And then when you put the label on, again, you also want to be sure that you're not covering up the vein. So it's a good idea to put it to one side or the other. So I'm just going to put it right on top of the transparent right there. And then um, in our documentation, we would want to be sure that we said, what the site that we started the IV on, so this would be the right forearm. We would want to say how many attempts, so with one attempt using sterile technique and how the patient tolerated it and anything else that you need to say about what you might have uh, initiated with the IV therapy. And of course, if you're giving medications, it would be documented in the MAR for that portion. Now we're going to talk about discontinuing it. So um, say it's a few days later and we're ready to take the IV out. So 
we need to think about what we need to bring into the room when it's time to do this. Again, you want to verify that you have the physician's order, verify that all of the doses, the, the antibiotic or whatever is all done because it's not good to find out, oh, we still had one more thing that was supposed to <laughs> infuse and we've just taken it out. So verify that everything is set to go and that you have an order to discontinue it. And basically, you just need gloves this time. You're going to bring some gauze into the room with you, so we're going to put that here. You're going to want tape again. Um, and the best practice at this point is also to use um, alcohol to wipe down the site before you take it out. So we do our hand hygiene, put our gloves on, verify that we have the right resident, and that we're ready to go. And so we're going to just work backwards on our tape now. So we're going to tell the patient, we're going to just take the tape off right now. And of course, this is the most uncomfortable part of this, is after this tape has been on for a few days, and especially if you've got somebody with fragile skin, it's likely going to be uncomfortable just getting the tape off. And some places will even have adhesive remover at the nurse's station to help get it off, or sometimes alcohol prep pads can kind of help get it off the skin. Um, but with this... Tegaderm, you just want to work from the, the sides, and they are kind of made to, if you pull parallel to the skin, it kind of helps lift it up off of the skin, and it's a little bit less comfortable. And then notice that what I'm going to use is my non-dominant hand to kind of help keep this stabilized while I'm taking the tape off. So you just want to work t back towards the catheter and pull, you know, in the direction toward where you're not pulling away from it, in other words. And so what I'm going to do is take the alcohol and I'm going to cleanse down on the site as one more precaution so that the site doesn't become infected after we take it out. And you're going to take your two by two and we're just going to double it over um, so that we have a smaller area and the same direction it went in we're just going to pull it right back out so we'll tell okay we're going to take it out now and we're not putting pressure on while we're taking it out but we will as soon as it is out and then I'm always inspecting this turning it and being sure that the full one inch is still there and that's why it is good to have that one inch on the dressing as well so that um, we can tell right there, or you can go back to documentation in the chart also, but it's nice to have it on the dressing that we know that the whole thing is intact and that we're going to document that it was intact. And if the patient or the resident is on anticoagulants, you're probably going to have to hold pressure for longer. And you do want to be sure that, like you're, uh, when I lift this up, you can see that she's still bleeding, so we need to hold it for longer. So we're not going to tape it down until we know the, the bleeding is controlled. And if you've got somebody that's taking aspirin or any kind of anticoagulant, you know that it's probably going to take maybe even two or three minutes before it's ready to be taped down. So just hold it until um, you can talk with your resident and see how they're doing and do other types of assessments while you're, while you're waiting. And then you're going to, um, some people will use a Band-Aid to secure it. Some people just prefer to keep the gauze. Um, if, you, it, it, if you've brought in extra gauze with you, you can replace this with, a, with another gauze. And see, now it's not bleeding anymore. And I would probably want to put a new, new gauze down. Um, but we'll just use a new part of the gauze here. And we're going to get one more piece of tape. and just tape this down. All right, and that's it.